Anyway, picks and bands for game number two. Vigilant will have the first choice overall here. How do you think this picks and bands phase will be different from the last? I, I don't think that they're going to give Moswal Foth. I, I got to imagine that's going to be a ban here or, or maybe even a first pick for a kill of the Hun. But again, it, it goes back to that smaller god pull for a kill of the Hun moving mm -hmm. over to the mid lane. Is that a comfort pick for him quite yet? Sure. I'm not sure. Well, the ban, there it is. The yeah. Thoth guy banned out. Vigilant don't want to deal with the long-range mage. Coming out from Ma's wall. Last ban will be the Arteo. Noble didn't like that on Manda Warrior. Vigil, first pick here. Could be Ganesh. They've done it a lot. They like to get that pick early on. But instead, it's going to be the Nemesis. This is a comfort pick for Mirage. Yes. Skeleton played it well in the last game. I've got no problem with this early pick. Uh, yeah, Mirage looked really strong. Uh, Nemesis, also one of the characters that he likes to play. Ho Yi will be a selection for Noble. We'll like to see Wowie on the strong hunters again, just keeping in mind where their power is located. And now we'll see Soul be piloted by Moswell. Really smart here. This is a good pick for Moswell. He's comfortable with it. Plus, as I mentioned, the first picks and bans, it's a kill of the Hun's most comfortable god in the mid lane. So this is this is a strong pick for them. Now he looked great on Raijin. I've got no problem with him going back to it. Mm -hmm. But I like these first two picks from Noble. Vigilant looking around out their first half of the draft here. And they'll go with Osiris. Interesting. So uh, last time around, they, we saw Walrus play this pick. Vigilant looking to take the picks away or just go with what they want? I, I think that this is, uh, we've seen Mando Warrior on the Osiris before, and he and he seems pretty comfortable on it. A little surprised that it isn't get the Ganesh there for Pain de Beyond. I mean, Vigilance has picked that early on very consistently, and now Noble have the option to just ban the two gods that it we've seen be. Pain yeah. all pl play all split long. It's Athena and Ganesh. What is Pain going to go to instead? Well, that is certainly a question, and I feel like it's a question that Vigilant have an answer to, uh, because they very specifically, so. that you you don't walk into this. Right, exactly. You know they're going to ban Athena and the Ganesh, and then pick yep. a Guardian themselves. So I think Vigilant have a, uh, they have to have a, something up their sleeve. Well, Fafnir is a good pick here for Noble. It works beautifully with both Huyi and Soul to give those characters a little bit of extra attack speed. Also just good in general. So Jing Wei, I like that pick into the Fafnir because you can knock him up immediately upon transforming or detransforming. But it's all a question of what Payne's going to play in that support role. Vigilant down to the wire, giving him thought here. Like you said, we've seen him on Athena and Ganesh the entire split long. Now the team taking some extra time to really think this one over. And it's going to be the Kuzinbo. Kuzinbo support coming out from Team Vigilant when all the Dang. marbles are on the line. Okay. All right. Do you think Pain like what was AFK and then hit like the drop down menu for the Guardians and couldn't click on Athena and couldn't click on Ganesh and was like, ah, you know, whatever, I'll just take Kuzinbo. No. All right, thanks for answering my question. Kuzinbo here does do well against auto attackers because you have that spike shell and you can return a lot of that damage and and stop it, but it does no one on Noble has that like Kraken or Vulcan ultimate that you just want to hold against Kuzinbo. Right. Like, Soul ultimate doesn't really do that much damage in the grand scheme of things. It's not that big, unavoidable mage ultimate that Pain can return back very quickly. Now, he can stand in the Hu Yi ultimate and do his little dance and, and pop the spike shell and pop a thorns and, sure. and make Wowie want to uninstall the game, but <laughs> it, not that, not overall exactly what I like to see for a Kuzinbo. I still think that Kuzinbo brings an incredible amount of, of control and they, you, you can't avoid the push realistically. He's going to push you in a harm's way a lot of the time. Uh, and Pain to Beyond pushing you into a Ryzen and Data Remember on the Jing Wei is not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy late game. I, re, I I do like the Kuzinbo pick. I think he's a strong pick in his own right. Mando Warrior finds a slow on a Skeleton, and it's Vigilance who want to take the fight, especially after Skeleton misses Skilly the missed. ring bounce. He's got to use the Purification Beads to get rid of that slow. And with that pressure earned in mid by Raijin and Kuzinbo, this could be a speed buff invade. Wubbin's going to go in here. He's going to have to sprint to get away. No way he can. Uh, that was actually the sprint from Walrus from over the wall to make sure that Wubbin was safe. And Vion providing the body block here. Might get in some trouble, however. Waiting for his dash to come up one more time. Stunned. There's the Chalk Axe He's as dead. well. Kuzinbo! Feeds first. Noble with the first blood, putting Pain to Beyond in the coffin. But Vigilant did manage to steal away the speed buff, so a slight win for Vigilant, though I think they'd rather have the first blood than the, than the speed buff itself. Skillet on a Walrus going to try and secure their own buff on the blue here. Kill the Hunt takes a lot of damage as well. Yeah. Ooh, Moswall just off the mark.
Luckily, <laughs> then Aquila avoided that slow. I think he uh, well has to go back to base if he gets hit by that one more time. Yeah, and without any health potions, he definitely does. No innate health sustain. He went for the Book of Thoth Rush, which is really, really good, but not great if you get poked out early. When you identify that the enemy mid laner doesn't have a lot of health potions, it started with the Book of Thoth too. It's a really good idea to try and poke them out early and make them regret it. Pain of Beyond giving chase on a Maz wall. Mirage in tow. It'll just be the little turtle ticking down Maz wall. A lot of damage on that little guy. Skeleton's level three here and wants to try and fight. Finds the sash on a Pain to Beyond who had already used the dash there just to try and get away. Good Sun wants more from Wubbin and Akilah the Hunt knows he can't get too close because then he'll just get ring bounce. But Pain gets a sprint from over the wall from Mando Warrior who then spreads out to make sure he doesn't get hit by that ring toss. Nice play there by Vigilant. Yeah, really big, really, really, really nice play from Mando Warrior actually. Uh, the ability to sort of collapse and then uh, walk away as well. Kind of really nice here. Noble, nice control of this game so far. Early on, everybody's listening to them. Yeah, but this is not a good start for Payne. Luckily for him, he didn't end up falling there. If he would have taken a second spill, that would have really spelled disaster for Team Vigilant. Staying alive there, absolutely critical, because he just needs to stick around and farm the map. That's why even despite being very low, he's willing to stick around, just trying to get a little bit of extra farm. Right now, Wowie facing off against Data Remember. The Ho Yi into the Jing Wei. Classic matchup we see a lot. It's Jing Wei a little bit, uh, ha has one of the few hunters that is not worried about Hu Yi soloing her very often because of that dive bomb knockup resulting in just a free agility away. You can really stop that guaranteed ricochet combo that most Hu Yi's will go for with the jump in right. into the one. Right now, Data Remember able to find the knockup and a couple of basics after the fact. Love to see the aggressive hunters earlier today if you missed Europe. Uh, we got to see Emilito and Funball go head to head. Emilito and Energy are ultimately winning and will wind up at Super Regionals. But Emilito and Funball taking the uh, 1v1 Hunter fights. Uh, and uh, I like to see North America doing the same. And there's a Sash on a Mando Warrior. Skillet on only level 4, but it's Walrus who's level 5. Skilly just didn't have another ring toss in time. He used it to help clear that wave. So Mando Warrior able to escape, but might be forced back to base. So he does have an extra health potion and some charges remaining in that health chalice. So with that and the death toll, probably stick around and just sustain up with the auto attacks. Kill the hunt, able to clear the wave out. Here comes Wubbin right over the wall, taking some damage as well. But Akilla, level four still, no ultimate available just yet. Now Kuzinbo does have an interaction with Soul that makes Soul not uh, not too happy, and that's the, the, the Nene Kappa can actually block the Stellar Burst from spreading out mm. and going into the team fight, where Soul, unlike most mages, isn't too worried about killing herself on Kuzumbo's spiked shell. That interaction where the Stellar Burst gets blocked does cut her damage significantly in the middle of the team fight. So look for Pain to continue to try and poke Moswall out in the team fight with those Nene Kappas and just make it more difficult for him to find a good Stellar Burst. That's a really good point, you know, just, just creating havoc and creating more bodies in those team fights can certainly uh, become an issue for players trying to find the right target or just trying to walk around. I mean, the, the, the Kappa winds up being a pretty troublesome, as I said, damage dealer. Once you get a couple of points in that, he really starts to tick away. But he also has to keep in mind that it does give Skilladon a free ring bounce target as well. So you don't want to throw it out willy-nilly and just allow Skilladon to bounce it down and, and slow you, give himself some extra movement speed, some penetration strip as well. Th that you got to be careful about that. But so there, there are positives and negatives to using the Nene Kappa aggressively in the middle of the team fight against Noble's composition in particular. Well, the Gremlins being started. Most of them go and all of them will go to Noble, it looks like. Here comes Skilled on getting knocked up ultimate from Pain to Beyond. Well, been half HP, Pain soloed one more time, stunned and brought to the sky. He'll be met on the bottom by Moswall and Walrus. Moswall with the last hit, two kills for the mid laner. Three ultimates used there, none of them on the side of Vigilant to try and save Pain de Vian. Maybe Mirage could have dropped an ult to try and at least make Noble reconsider using all of theirs, but Vigilant instead decided that Pain was pretty much dead to rights, and when you commit three alts, especially those that do enough damage like Stormcall, Windfire Wheels, and, and Supernova, mm. it's gonna be tough to keep your support alive. So far, steal it on. Don't he even did. say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't he's say it, don't say it. Stop it! He's you! No, he's not! He sashed a camp! No, that doesn't, that's not a thing! He tried to do you, the you! I knew you were gonna say it. Can you not? Not a thing. That, that's you! I don't know what you're referencing. 
Oh, that time that's he's... the play. He gets pushed in, but the age is too strong. Love the play. Pain to be on still here. Moswell going to be safe. Skillet on it's you. No, he's not for the beyond plus Kuzumbo. No, no, Skillet on it's you. You sashed the camp. I do not recall. Oh, there's gifts. Don't worry. Someone, I, someone will be able to find it. Wait, excuse me. Gifts. Like, it's my birthday. Like you're gonna give me gifts? No, there's a gift. I'm sure there are multiple versions of the gift of you sashing a blue buff camp. Was oh, it, or was it a oh, purple you, buff? Oh, you mean GIF? Wow. You're really going to dig yourself an even deeper hole? Here we are. Jiff. We earned this. We did earn this one. <laughs> but seven minutes in, Noble with a nice little wait, do you, Okay, wait. Were you trolling me, or do you actually say it as Jiff? I, I, yes, I say things correctly. I speak for a living. I dislike you as a person. Gremlin split. That makes one of us, but I dislike you, so that, you know, answers back. It doesn't even make sense. Akilah the Hun now has decided to go for his boots to finish those off instead of finishing off Book of Thoth, and this is a good adaptation because Moswell is not going for the Book of Thoth rush as he did in game one. When you've got both mages going for the the rush of that item, losing the mobility by not going boots isn't that big of a deal because the other mage is equally as immobile as you, but with Moswell finishing off his boots early on, and having that extra movement speed from the Disapparate, Akilah the Hun's adjustment to make sure that he can keep up to those rotations that Moswell's going to be going for is a good idea. Find the right side. Down comes Z and a warrior. Skeleton with the ultimate used right on top of him. Walrus is going to get stunned out here, and that's going to be the end of that one. Mirage gets Satch, uses the Crit. beads. One more will do it. Can't find it. Here comes help from both sides. And Mirage walks away safe and sound. Can't say the same for Walrus. It's Big Daddy Kappa. Two kills on the side of Vigilant. There's that rotation coming from Akilah the Hunt as well to get credit for the kill on a Skeleton. That 2v2 ends up going heavily in Vigilant's favor. Meanwhile, on the left side, Hunter v. Hunter. They remember half. Wowie That's fighting true. in the suns. Wowie trying to get the basic attacks off. Beta remember able to get a little bit of a lead here, but now brought back down. Here's the sign of the crow, and the rest of the team comes up and pushes the 1v1 away. No hunter using their relics, but Wowie has to use the ultimate as pain. Trying to steal away an oracle, but won't get one. Wowie has to jump away, and that Wowie is the better end of that deal, not only because he hit more auto attacks than Data Remember, but also because he rushed the Devourer's Gauntlets, whereas Day went for boots right away. So there's there where that discrepancy in stacks could really be impactful. Yep. Wowie, 50 stacks compared to the 15 from Day. It's, you're just, you have to hit two autos for every one in order to come out on top, and, and that just wasn't happening. Yeah, Wowie outplayed Data Remember both uh, in the in the item building shop and on the battlefield in that exchange. Really impressive there from Noble's Hunter. Wobbin coming out of the jungle, walking right up into the lane. Not a big deal. Just saying hi. I just imagined you like messaging someone like I outplayed you in the item shop. I have one hundred percent on that. I'm sure that per made that person feel real dumb, Tom. They did. They felt silly. Outplayed in the item shop, dude. Yeah. Skeleton going for that himself with the Talaria boots pick up here. On nice the try. Jungle. Bad segue. What do you mean? He's, he's outplaying by getting a little bit of extra gold from his boots choices. Now, no, it no, means no, that he's no. not going to be doing as much damage as Mirage will with the Warrior tab eye, but it gives him some extra movement speed out of combat, some extra HP 5 out of combat. And then it, with that ring toss, you can get multiple procs of those shoes and get 30 gold for each god you hit. Nice. See, look, he just got 90 gold from that. Very true. That is why we see the choice. Pain to be unforced in the ultimate himself. Meanwhile, his mid laner all the way from the back trying to force players out with the ultimate, and it will be successful. Here comes Mirage and help as Skillon looks for the turnaround kill. Pops one up in the air. Skillon in trouble now, however, surrounded by vigilant team members. One more shot, and it's Mirage Ooh. and the day to remember. Wally able to bite back, but it's a two for one so far. Day gets knocked up. Doesn't go aggressive, thankfully. It's the rest of Team Noble waiting around the corner. A really nice ultimate there from Mirage, but, or from Moswell rather, but just wasn't there in time. That's two fights in a row now that Vigilant was just a little bit quicker to the fight than the than the reinforcements from Noble. That's got to change in the mid game. That is also something that I think is 
that is a part of what Vigilant brings to the battlefield. Uh, very similar to how Energy plays with respects to, uh, they're always relatively close to each other when they make a play. Vigilant very rarely make a play without having some sort of help within shouting distance. And I think that's a big part of what has gotten Vigilant this far. And, and that can really take you a long way. Uh, even without having, you know, top tier talent necessarily. I think a lot of people would say that about this roster, though they're starting to prove that they are top tier talent. The, just working together as a unit and yeah. be in having a numbers advantage is is, is such a big deal. It, it can really cover a lot of weaknesses for your team. Absolutely. <laughs> The stun well, the, animation. The, yeah, where he's on his back. He's on his, he's on his back. That's always fun. A uh, couple of oracles go in the way of Vigilance. Nice little steal there. You know who else has a really good animation? A wheelish. Um, when she's feared on the Suku, like mm, Fear the No Scooby Evil. Do? Yeah, he he gets he uh, a wheelish jumps in the arms of the dog who goes on his hind legs and Scooby Doo's it. It is hilarious. I agree, and that's excellent analysis from both of us. Yeah, we're crushing it. Couldn't Ten agree points. more. <laughs> you know who makes it to Super Regionals? Who's that? Us, no matter what. Only the winner of this three-game set gets to go, however. Game one went to Noble. Two more to play if Vigilant has it their way. Four to three, read the kills. Very tight game here, all things even. As we look towards Vigilant to make a play in the mid-game, I think. I, I think this, uh, this draft that we see the blue team have uh, definitely more of a mid-game than an early-game scoop. There's the ultimate on to Walrus from Mirage. A kill of the Huns here as well, but not going to be able to close the gap until that Tether Stun comes through from Mando Warrior. And a kill of the Hun will close the gap and find his second kill of the game. And again, it's just numbers for Vigilant on the right side of the map. But that's the play. Smite 101. What do you do when there's too many people on the right side of the map, Ryan? You go to the left side and get the Gold Fury, and Noble will do just that, even despite Data Remember using the ultimate. He positions aggressively on the backside because Mirage is coming around the back. And he's going to look for a target. There's the sprint. Everybody, they need these kills of Vigilant if they want to wind up on top. Mirage gets stunned out, and that be that. Pain to be on on a different level. Wubbin going to be low, but no kills. Nobody giving follow-up. Data Remember in trouble. Sash is good. There's the push. Beautiful play from the support. That's the power of Kuzinbo. But now he's got to be worried about how much damage Moswald might return. Noble able to escape with all five members still alive after getting that Gold Fury that puts them back into the lead. As you mentioned, Smite 101, that is a lot of faith that your team's going to be able to secure that Gold Fury. If that goes Vigilant's way and the team fight afterwards, that is a massive lead for them. But Noble stands strong, and that's the confidence of yeah. a team that ha was still working towards the top but is finally starting to get there. These guys look like a more confident group, and having faith in your hunter, in your mid laner, to secure that objective and put yourself back in the ga game is absolutely critical. That's that's how you have to think. Portal Demon halfway dead already. Pandavion being zoned by Wubbin Mirage here as well. Slice and dies off cooldown, but it's going to be the ultimate from the chalk that takes down the portal. Listen, if you want to be a if you want to be a, a top 10 player, you got to think you're top five. If you want to be a top three player, you got to think you're number one. And if you want to be number one, you got to think you're the best that ever was. And that's kind of the thought process that you see with these teams in the gauntlet. None of these teams that find themselves in the last stage of the gauntlet think they should be here. And that's it's that type of confidence that allow you to make the plays we just saw. Noble have to think that they are, you know, think that they're capable of being a top four team. Otherwise, you just fold. Exactly. And even if you, you know, you know that you should be here because of some bad performances, you know that you can not only get out of the gauntlet and should get out of the gauntlet. I mean, yeah. every gauntlet player you talk to, like, oh yeah, this is easy for us. Like, we got a we got a great chance to to win this. And then you got to believe that you're going to go to super regionals and make some noise there as well. Yeah. And, and you know, it's that it's that confident that fine line between confidence. And, and and cockiness that I don't think a lot of play I don't think a lot of players at home or fans at home that aren't competitive get it. You need it. I mean, it, you get so many uh, you get so many people not only just in Twitch chat but other players you know ranked players who are all tell you that you don't deserve to be where you are and you're complete garbage and, and this that and the third thing and you need to have that confidence to be able to shake all that off and, and just keep on doing your job it's kind of fun captain twig i think there's a little bit of tongue-in-cheek there but you know he always comes out and saying you know my god-given talent like you need to have some of that you know and, and even a little bit serious i bet the obey guys are like haha funny joke 
But yeah, seriously, Twig is going to beat the hell out of you, and you're just going to have to deal with it. So that's the type of attitude you got to have in these games, and I think it's fun to see, uh, you know, these guys who we, you know, you find yourself in the gauntlet. It's a second chance. But everybody here absolutely believes that they, they just barely missed it. Pain a little bit isolated here. Kill the Hunt in tow, and there's a sash onto him from Skeledon. No one to bounce to with that universe ring toss, though. So Skilly just going to back it on up. Payne's been doing this for the past four, three minutes, just walking up, throwing a kappa, and just being obnoxious and annoying in the face of Noble. And really, he's occupying their time. He's making sure they're not doing anything. And if they do leave, Payne is able to communicate, hey, they went to the right side. They're looking for their speed buff, or, or they're looking for their red buff. Payne's just sitting here and making sure that nobody does anything without him knowing. And that's what Kuzumbo does best. He's just obnoxious to deal with and that's kind of yeah. what Kuzin or G Ganesh can do in that support role as well exactly just be obnoxious just be in the face of the enemy make it so they don't want to hit you or can hit you and mm -hmm. and then try and keep track of them from there so not too surprising I suppose that, that this Kuzin bow is in Payne's God pool yeah and and not only so you know we like to we like to joke about the the thorns and everything but tremendous peel and Payne is a, is a guy that loves to peel with the with the Athena and the Ganesh. He's a peel type guy. And Payne is gonna the the push right there. Peel also set up. Well, but not caught out this time. But we've seen Payne save a number of players with that push already. And the that that ultimate is the real peel monster. I mean, it's so difficult to do anything when you're getting hit by that watery grave ultimate. And so look for Payne to continue to try and use it as disruption in these team fights. He's done a good job of doing it so far. Speed buff goes uh, too vigilant, easy peasy, no problem here. 41 to 43,000, of course, as we consider the gold vigilant. And again, talking about how uh, this team plays from behind pretty well, uh, I think this is even in vigilant's mind. I don't think they're a step behind at all. Sure, I mean, even if this was any other team, I mean, 1,700 gold at 18 yeah, minutes, sure. like, not a big deal at all. I mean, even even with the experience factored in there, it's actually vigilant who, who are ahead in some key areas only the right side of the map where Mando Warrior is down about a level and a half to Walrus, but still being a level 14 means that the Mando can still do his job effectively enough. Exactly. He just needs to sort of soak up some of the damage and just be a body, essentially. And Mando Warrior will take out the Tier 1 tower because of the three-man dive in a Walrus so early on uh, that we saw before the, uh, before the Gold Fury initially. So Vigilant trying to make their mid-game plays, but unsure of where to go just yet. This Gold Fury going to be totally critical in this game. As Skeleton in some trouble now already. Down very low, and a kill of the Hun's going to be able to find him very quickly. Couldn't even find find an escape route. He'd already used the ultimate. And that's that's the setup that Kuzumbo brings. Like, it's, it's, it's time to... We can all continue to laugh at him, but it's time to stop joking about him. The push into the ultimate. Where are you going besides the fountain when you've got return damage? Ooh, a kill of the hunt. <laughs> barely able to get back into the base, and now no one really wants to hit pain because see how that spike shell active. Nice double knock up there from Day, but Vigilant hasn't pulled the Gold Fury quite yet. Oh, Skeleton's up in 10 seconds, and with how much movement speed he has between the Talaria and the Wing Blade, he'll be able to get back to this fight pretty quickly. Mando and Payne, the bouncers, half HP on the Gold Fury already. Wally pushed in, peel off of the objective. Data River takes a big chunk of damage, but tagged out as a kill of the Hun walks right back in. Full HP, full mana, ready to bang. But Wubbin, he has to go back to base. He's about half health and below half mana. His ultimate just came down. He just transformed back into the Dwarf, so it's going to be a while before he's able to come back to this fight and really make a big impact. The Skeleton has returned, but this Gold Fury pull is still going on. And still dancing around here. Both teams seem to have an opportunity, and neither, no, neither team really wants to jump right on through. Vigilant with the better footing. Pull it one more time. 75% HP already. Big damage onto it. And Noble realize they have to get in there nice and fast as the torrent that's going to bring Walrus into the enemy clutches and back to the enemy base. Day to remember on top of that one. Shock back home. Wubbin actually tries to keep that Gold Fury leash, but takes a little bit of damage for it. And I don't know if this is the play that Wubbin wants, but there's the Blink Ultimate from Skeely right onto Mirage, but not enough to bring him down. Meanwhile, Mando Warrior going to jump onto the back line and look, there's the push one more time from Pain to Beyond. The Ultimate coming out from a kill of the Hun, but the beads chased, so no damage coming out for the mid lane mage to find the kill. Enough to force Vigilant off the Gold Fury, though. What a play from Skeleton. He comes back, blinks over the wall, and immediately finds a max range ult. 
right onto Mirage, who didn't fall, but did get low enough to have to go back to base. And now Noble's going to try and get this Gold Fury down before he comes back. And it's 10%. There needs to be a quick, crazy play. And it is going to happen again. Team Vigilant snatches the Gold Fury right out of the hands of Noble. Wow, he takes down Mando Warrior, who I think was the culprit. But it's Mirage on the back line. Everybody running. Everybody low. And Wubbin, a couple of shots will do it. Day to remember misses everything. But now he knocks himself up looking for the defensive dash as Chalk shows up once more. Silences out three players. Payne tosses the Kappa. And everybody walks away. Vigilant steal it and take the tie. So just like they did before, Noble end up taking a risk around that Gold Fury. And we praised them for it last time because they were able to secure it. But you got to crucify them whenever they don't, they're don't. they not able to get it. And that's just a too, too risky of a call to go for that Gold there Fury. There was too many players last there. Time, last time, they had at least the sole ultimate to try and confirm it with the Supernova. There are no ultimates available. They're just literally hoping that it goes their way. You don't have any secure on this roster without an ultimate. Even with ultimates, it's not great as Mirage is able to find a nice solo kill onto Wowie. You could make risky calls, and that's okay. Okay, but it's got to be calculated. That is literally just a coin flip from Noble. I hope we get this Gold Fury, and if we don't, well, we're kind of toast. Well, they didn't get it, and now they're getting burnt. Just out there playing the Whale Lord, just seeing that what kind of coin flips they can get. However, right side, Vigilant make the same type of risky call, but they trust on their front line. Pain to be on zones out two separate players. Just between the Thorns and the Push and the Ultimate, nobody can walk through that that walkway coming from the mid lane into the Portal Demon. And Pain to Vion just says, listen, we're going to kill this objective before my ultimate's over and just go away. Skill it on, finds another nice ultimate. This time it's on to Data Remember, who has no relics available, but his ult does get off in time. Wubbin trying to chase him down, and a nice shot there. Ah. Good ah. mechanics from Wubbin. Ah. I love it. That's the type of aggression you need. Sprint popped as Noble looking to keep the pedal to the metal. Stun on Mando. A secondary stun as well. Here comes the silence. Who cares about Thorns? Just push him down. Level 15, level 16. He dings in the middle of the team fight, but still tough. As Mirage goes deep, Ooh. Pain to Beyond goes deeper and sends somebody to the watery grave. Skeleton not coming back from that one. Wubbin continues the, ch the chain stun on the Pain to Beyond, but he should have used that jump to get away. Mando Warrior gets a free kill onto a low health Fafnir. I think Wubbin could have just backed up and reset there, but tried to trade his own life out for Pain de Vion's, but Noble just didn't have enough damage. I love that fight from Vigilant because I, that, that's a fight where there's nothing really to win except respect. All of the objectives are down. I don't think you're picking up a tier one for that one, but that's Vigilant saying, don't dive us, you dummies. Like, what are you doing? And they just fight pretty much to send a message. I like, like it. Well, they get two kills, and, you know, we talk all the time about you don't want to fight when it's not, when there's nothing to take because it's too risky, but if you end up not losing anyone and yeah. getting two kills for yourself, that's still golden experience that you're getting that from the kills and from the kills and then the farm afterwards, and it's still no golden experience for the dead members, so it ends up, you know, not being completely worthless, but... That's a morale fight. Sure. That's, that's, that's a morale fight. That's pain going, we don't let them do that to us, do we? Whose house? Our house, right? Like, we've, we've all played some silly sports. You know, sports. I, would, I would say that that probably isn't how their comms are, but I've watched Pain, <laughs> and I that would not surprise me if they've got, like, a team chant. I, they, they absolutely do. <laughs> I mean, it's Pain to be on. We might get a chance to see it if they're able to win two in a row. I, you know what? It, it, Pain to be on, I, I, I think he brings a certain type of character to the league. And whether or not they make it to Super Regionals... Uh, Skildon's going to make it to a kill of the Hun, landing on the bottom. It's going to be, well, nobody. No real response there. Skildon goes in by himself, and now they're on the retreat. Pain of Yon versus the world, and nobody capitalizes off of any of it. And Wowie has to use the ultimate defensively. Walrus used his ultimate to try and keep that chase going on to a kill of the Hun. Now it's Mirage's turn to blink in. He's going to be met with a crit pretty soon, but it's Skildon who's on the run. Nice shell from Noble to try and keep their jungler alive, but they won't be able to do it. Mando Warrior gets his second. Coming up big, 2-1-7 and seven for the rookie solo laner. And Vigilant fighting in the enemy jungle, keeping everybody at bay. Here comes a kill of the Hun, just ready to go in the ultimate, just walking up like the Millennium Falcon saying, walk at me, walk at me. And everybody in Noble has to go retreat. What a funny pose.
Yeah, he, he was. He had to use it like that because he was so low and was trying to get in position and then make an impact with a taunt or a fear to try and get someone away. Ends up not mattering too much as Moswell takes a big chunk really fast. I mean, that's a slice and dice in one auto, bringing him down to half HP. Heartseeker and just power. That's that's where we see Heartseeker and the Titans bane. And just Mirage able to melt players. Really, uh, really efficient stuff coming out. And you know, you were talking again about the, the many ways to to build and play. Nemesis, and here's yet again another look. I, I like it. The Brawler's beat stick impactful in this game against Shock. the Chalk and the Soul. Is Gold Fury's going to go down here without any contest? I mean, Wowie was was that. privy to the information that Day was around That's the that. Gold Fury, but didn't decide to step up a little bit too fearful, even with both relics available. I think Wowie's got to be there to at least make Vigilant think about attacking him or giving off Gold Fury. You got to at least make him reconsider that because the rest of Noble was on the way. And yes, it's risky for Wowie to position aggressively there, but you just can't afford to give up a, a close game Gold Fury for nothing. These are the Gold Furies that these are the Gold Furies that bring teams into the position to to win. You get that 2,000 gold lead, and then the, the next team fight is tilted in your favor. One player picks up a powerful, you know, power spike item because of that 2K gold lead off of the Gold Fury. These are the Gold Furies that you look back at the tape and go, wow, that shouldn't have happened. And, and the gives you ward coverage. It makes sure that around the Fire Giant or around the right side, you're going to be able to continue to buy wards and not fall behind in your build because of it. Well, it is not the end of the world. The Noble give up that Gold Fury by any stretch. They're, they're still in a good spot to, to win the next fight. But I just think that overall, those are the types of Gold Furies that don't need to go down for Vigilant. And, exactly. And also just outside of the numbers, losing an uncontested Gold Fury with everybody alive can't feel good. Amy Beyond pushes Walrus into the wall. Thorns activated, but still a ton of damage. Noble take out the Portal Demon almost accidentally as the team fight is still looking for everybody else. Wally very low. Manda Warrior by himself has to get out of there. Too little, too late. And Woman again goes deep, getting the kill. And Scaly's going to find an ultimate as well. This time without a day to remember, and Moswall's going to get it. Woman just off the mark with the jump stun, but not on the second. Another kill for Woman. That's a double for him. And Noble come through the portal and or perfect position to take the fire. That is that is a big play by Noble. Vigilant, honestly, just make a couple of mistakes. Manda Warrior pushes all the way up. If Manda Warrior doesn't go that deep, it's like quiet. But Noble, they walk up, they take care of it, and Homeboy can get it. Noble with the fire giant. They're looking to take out these towers. It's one of those moments where Noble looks up after the wreckage of the team fight, like, all right, what's next? Oh, we're right next to Fire yeah. Giant. I've got a Fafnir <laughs> ult on me. Like, uh, okay, yeah, we'll take this. Thank you yeah. for thank you for your consideration. I they mean, that's, accidentally got the portal. Demon. Just stumbled on top of it, and, and a lot of that is credit to Walrus, who actually made sure that that portal demon stayed leashed throughout the entirety of Moswell's ultimate to ensure that it went Noble's way. Good play by him and the rest of Noble in order to guarantee that portal demon. But you'd think with that many ultimates confirmed, just to try to get the portal demon, that would have gone Vigilant's way at least a little bit, but yeah. they end up getting nobody, losing three. Mando and just too deep. I agree, uh, just a little bit too deep. A kill of the hunt, I don't think his relics were available there, so he got double stunned. And honestly, you gotta give a lot of credit to Wubbin, who's been very, very accurate this game with the hammers. The, mm. the, the choice of positioning hasn't always been great, but the uh, the hammer accuracy has been, and that's and that's critical. Skilledon again takes one to the sky, brings him to the ground, and Moswell puts him six feet under. Wowie answers back, taking down Pain to beyond double digits for Noble. Turtle Man, a kill of the hunt, able to answer back, picking up Walrus, but it's a one for two so far. And again, Wubbin on the aggression. Mando Warrior, see you later. Number three, four, Wowie. And a kill of the hunt can just watch. Akilla does have both relics here, and this could still be a, a, a Phoenix Siege potential for Noble, waiting for that mid lane wave. Wonder why they're going for mid instead of right side here, where they actually already had the minion wave. Either way, they're trying to get at least one Phoenix and should be able to with the AoE coerce and the Oh, day! Side. Oh, day! Oh, day! He gets jumped on, he gets stunned on, he gets stunted on. Over the top! Wow, he just dealing him dirty. Oh, that one didn't even have to happen. And wow, he forced it. That's the type of spice I want to see at a Noble. A lot of times, I feel like this team is bland, and they don't have this 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 extra intangible. Like 
the it factor, the X sure. factor, whatever you want to say. And that's the type of play, you know, we saw it when Wowie, you know, 1v5s plus a Titan. We see it when Wowie jumps there. That's the type of stuff that Noble need, I, I think, to really take them to the next level. They need that They need that identity still. Yeah. And, uh, playing aggressive is certainly a good one for them because they've got a lot of players who are willing to do so. And Skeleton is 0-6 right now, and I think a lot of people probably look at the scoreline and say he's what been about the 10? playing awful. He's doing a really strong job on this Naja. He has set up nearly every single team fight for Noble, and it's allowed Wubbin to clean up kills. It's allowed Wubbin to, to find those late games, those late fight stuns on the Fafnir. Skeleton's done a great job in a non-traditional role as an initiator with this Naja. Now, if he's gonna stick to that role, I don't know if Deathbringer is necessarily the item for him. Maybe he's gonna try and transition into a more damage-oriented Naja. <coughs> yeah, should have been Malice. It's mathematically better on Naja, but we'll let him go for that one. It's a, it's a common misconception that the Deathbringer is the play. Malice is a better item on Naja if you're gonna go for the ultimate. If you're gonna go for like the basic attacks late game, then Deathbringer is certainly nice, but we just, solidify that he's being the initiator, so he's so, not getting that bonus. And it's using that ultimate to put as much damage on it, and it's still filling that initiator role because he's just trying to put people low enough to allow Moswall or Wowie or whoever to come in and find a quick cleanup kill, needing less autos or abilities or whatever it may be to find the kill off his initiation. All that said, still probably the star of this game. Skeleton? Yeah. Uh, he's certainly done a great job. I mean, he's third in the player damage yep. charts in the game. He's just behind Wowie as well. The six deaths, if he, if those, if he was like one in four, I'd agree I with you. I think the six deaths are kind of like hit, we just established. He's he's initiating. Sure. Par for the course. I mean, that's that's sort of what comes with the territory of being this guy singling a player out, and and that's that's what infuriates me about uh, about players at home and and, and casual fans when they only read the first two numbers in the slash line assists are so important and the 06 and 10 is completely different than an 06 and ole of course i mean being a part of 10 of your 12 kills is a, is a <laughs> really big key yeah. to this team fight and, and he again as we mentioned it, it looks bad it's certainly not he's had a great game so far well it certainly helped his team really bring the noise Twelve thousand gold in the lead is team noble vigilant with an extra kill but those don't really matter much. It's all about the golden experience, and Noble certainly leading in those categories. A kill of the Hun across the way, however. Akila and Payne have looked pretty good this fight, or, or this game, excuse me, but Vigilant unable to really find what they need underneath those two. Day just off the mark with that persistent gust. That would have been a plenty of damage on the Wubbin, but ends up able to escape. Fire Giant down to below 50% HP. Skeleton looking for that initiation. And there's Portal Demon up, so Noble can come right on through it for a number of seconds. But the ultimate out of Pain and Beyond to sort of push people out to the ultimate out of a kill of the Hunt to maybe deal some sort of damage. The Suns come down for no uh -oh. reason. Skeleton on East the Dark Day to remember with another kill. But Moswall's going to set it back in Noble's favor with a big two alt combination. Wubbin is able to close the gap, Again. and he'll close another one on the Mirage. Walrus doesn't even need to do anything because Wubbin's got the double. Pain to Beyond all by himself, running up north, trying to break everybody on Noble towards him as the rest of his team escapes down south. Meanwhile, the Titans being under being attacked by two lanes of minions. 9400. They, they, I mean, they've got 35 seconds to stay to remembers up. Now, Kill of the Hun is going to be critical in this defense. No ultimate available for him, but both relics may need to try and dash in and play aggressive and bait some time, but it's a lot of time to bait. I mean, 25 seconds until Day's back up. I'm with you. This might be game. 9,000 on the Titan. That's Manda it. Warrior and Kill the Hun, the only defense, and it's already down to half HP. 5,000 remaining. Team Noble on top of the Garland. Vigilant, the only one in their way. And in two games, Noble will topple the opposition. We'll see at Super Regionals. Impressive stuff from Noble. Not, not the cleanest games overall. Still a lot to work on for them, and that's very clear, but a win's a win is a win, and, and that's mm -hmm. two wins and gets that Noble into Super Regionals where I, I know that a lot of fans and probably a lot of teams even will say, oh, you know, Noble, GG, we got this one. But 
This is a team that can upset just about any one of the Super Regionals. Yeah, I, I think that this Noble specifically, Noble has spent a long time having a bad reputation as a bad team, and you, you know what? I'm going to be the guy to say they deserved it for the majority of their career. Yeah. But here in this fall split, maybe the summer split. It's been very recent that Noble has been able to turn over a new leaf, and and this is a team that, that can beat virtually anybody. And they're, they're still in it, and they're, they can say that, and a lot of other teams can't. Uh, you look at Cryptic, you look at Vigilant. Those are teams that had Super Regionals aspirations some maybe even say world's aspirations for those squads, but it's Noble who's going to be coming out of the gauntlet to represent NA. And being able to look at Vigilant before we sort of bid them adieu, one, I hope the squad sticks together. Yeah. Uh, these guys, this is a team that has legs, and this is a team that can absolutely grow. And seeing them, them perform here, you know, and, and even bring out, like I said, you know, even even uh, bringing out stuff like the Kuzinbo, like that shows that they're willing to think on the other side of things. Yeah, and guys who had rookie splits here, like Mando Warrior, That's Data a four Remember, rookie team, right? Akilla the Hunt, and yeah, it was with Grave, and then Mirage ended up joining, so it was ended up only being three rookies. But that is a team with a plenty of talent, and I think that every single one of those guys proved that they can play mm -hmm. at the SPL level. So will they get a chance to, you know, will this team stick together? I'm not sure, but I, I think that they've got a, a bright future if they decide to. I absolutely hope that we get to see more of, uh, of Payne Vian and friends. Earlier today, we saw the Europeans go energy able to topple Valence Squadron. Poppy showed up a little bit. Definitely a little bit of surprise. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. That was that was one of the craziest sets I've seen in a long time. I mean, Poppies were this close yeah. to, to knocking energy out of season four entirely. I, it, it's still surreal to me. But it doesn't happen. Energy nope. are your European crowns. What's your take on energy? Uh, still a favorite to make it to Worlds. I, I, I don't think that it would be a world championship without them. Neither did I. Energy, your crown of Europe, and of course the crown for North America goes to Noble. On the desk is Tolly and Ron. Thank you, FDOT. I am here on the analyst desk with Mr. Ron Schaubert here. What a nice set of action here from North America. Noble just coming out on top. Some solid NA games. Very uh, unexpected results and very uh, fun matchups to see. Let's take a look at the journey that Noble had to take in order to qualify to that gauntlet. Earlier today, before they matched up against Vigilant, they had to 2-1 against a Salsa Squadron. So if we take a look at that North American bracket, we'll see just what was able to happen. Salsa Squadron did well. In day one, they toppled over Team Allegiance, toppled over Team Cryptic, got stopped in their tracks against Noble, and Noble bringing it home for North America. Very unfortunate for Salsa Squadron, considering that they made a lot of crucial errors, even, and I say a lot, and I mean, you know, three or four that really got them that loss. In particular, Sops getting picked in front of that Tier 2 in mid, Skilledon with his blink ult, that kind of thing. Uh, and then walking back into the Portal Demon. That was yeah. a very rough throw by Salsa Squadron. Before we recap the Salsa Squadron set, let's take a reflection here on this last set of the day against Vigilant, because honestly, it could have easily went to a game three, I feel, except for the end, yeah. near about the 28 minute marker. So when Noble was able to capitalize off of the overaggression from Vigilant with that Fire Giant play. The overaggression from Vigilant, they were, granted, they had a right to be, uh, they were winning every fight, they were able to push their tanks ahead to get a get in front of everybody kill those carries but then the tanks die and they slowly just lose and they go oh they have a fafnir old and they're in front of fire and they just wiped us and then they just kind of go oh i'm Sorry for that, actually. It just seemed to me personally that Mando Warrior, Mando Warrior on the Osiris was a little too overconfident. He put yeah. himself in a position of overextending, and then the rest of his teammates died. Until that point, the game was pretty even. It seemed to me that Skilldon was making the plays happen. He had a lot of deaths here, Ron, but he was still making it happen for his team. Even though Skilldon died, what, I think six times in that final game, he was still, you know, doing it. He's up there, and he's playing Sir Cat. He's, he's playing Naja. He's got so much ability in these team fights to just disrupt everything, and that's why 100% what you want out of your jungler, so good job. Yeah, he was also building into those traveler shoes. He also wanted to get the mobility, <laughs> yeah. the gold, being a little bit greedy, yeah. but despite having all that death, was top of the player damage. Wowie also actually just wowed me personally being able to make the plays happen. Yeah, Wowie, uh, I'm going to say, is my personal MVP, and during that game with uh, with Salsa Squadron, there was a huge team fight, and Wowie and Sops are over here. This is the 1v1 that we didn't catch on camera. We can see here, see, okay, so there's the team fight happening. Wowie's 
he's in it. Oh, and he, the double <laughs> bounce. <laughs> and he double bounces in. Right so. at the <laughs> edge of the Suns when you're already getting slowed anyway. And this was the second one after the fact, actually, just making it happen from behind. The ricochet after the Suns here, just doing work, even using the beats to prevent the knockoff from Ganesh. And he just kept bringing the fire. Yeah, Wowie was a player that, he, especially after that uh, that quadra kill he got against United the last split, everybody expected Wowie to just come into his own, and he was playing very aggressive at that point, but in this entire uh, false split, he was not playing like the old Wowie. He was playing very far back, his positioning was poor, his ults were uh, like poorly timed, but then this entire gauntlet, he's been killing it. Whatever Wowie has been doing recently has certainly been working out. He's been making the plays happen since his first land debut at the group stages last year with Noble. I believe also that uh, both Wubbin was there alongside Wallace, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. in that Noble squad. So they're going to be there at Super Regionals making the plays happen. I'm really happy for these guys. They definitely certainly earned it here for them. What do you feel, Ron? Well, I think everybody could agree that this team goes where Wubbin goes. And Wubbin playing that aggression on that Fafnir, not entirely the most aggressive support that you would play, but Wubbin not in those poor positioning, not missing plucks under Tier 2 tower at two minutes. I will never forget that, ever, Wubbin. How dare you? But he's playing that Fafnir so well, and if he does that, he gets these ultimates off, he's doing so much, they can win. Maybe not against the top of the NA, but they can get into the wild card. It seemed like Wubbin was definitely emotional in the game where he was feeling himself. Getting that yeah. last hit play on today to remember <laughs> sometime around the 21 minute yeah. mark or so. And then, because of how confident he was, the rest of his team was able to try to dive that tier one tower, got punished for it, allowing Vigilant to stay relevant in that game. Granted, he was uh, getting a lot of hits here. Fafnir does a lot of damage, that kind of thing. He gets the double kill to set up the Fire Giant that pretty much turns the entire game and the entire gauntlet around for Noble. But outside of Wowie, outside of Wubbin and skill down, Walrus made things happen against also Squadron. That Hercules play, I think it was, yeah. what, game number two with the boulder? Yes, game number two, he gets the double kill on the Gold Fury. Uh, a double bounce boulder. Disgusting. Very, uh, he, he definitely meant to do that. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that was predicted. You know what I say about luck. It's when skill or, or sorry, when opportunity meets preparation and obviously Walrus puts himself in a position oh, and was it? totally prepared for it. Just throwing the boulder, Hail oh. Mary, gets it. Oh, look at this. He couldn't even see them. And they turned to <laughs> He couldn't even see them. He turns around and he gets a double and then he turns around and... Uh Spam laughs. You know, cool guys don't look at explosions, and that's exactly what Mark Maloney did there against Salsa Squadron. Him and the rest of his team will be going to that North American side of things for the Super Gauntlet. Energy out of Europe, Noble out of North America. Is this how you predicted it? I would say, uh, I mean, granted, Salsa Squadron's uh, performance yesterday made me believe that they could have beaten anybody in NA. These are teams that are not as good as the 6-5 uh, and five of EU, but uh, Noble winning, not a surprise. Energy winning, definitely not a surprise. Well, now that everything Thing has concluded here for the action. After this has ended, you guys can go home and play some Smite as well and get your three times worshippers. Go home and practice your Hercules, okay, because Walrus... And your Hoi. Yeah, practice your Hercules and your Hoi because apparently that's literally all you need. Or your Susano and Hachiman right there on your screen. What do you mean? Oh, it's us. It's you. It's not me anymore. So. But outside <laughs> outside of the gauntlet, these teams are going to be advanced to Super Regionals for their opportunity to reach the HRX. You two can join them along us us, the casters, just go to HiResExpo.com for your tickets today. And Energy and Noble going into Super Regionals, they're vying for that. They're trying to go to Worlds so bad. And Energy just won Worlds twice, so they should uh, have, a, have a little bit of an advantage. Well, thank you fans so much for watching us today during the North American action and European in the gauntlet. Tomorrow, though, we have more action from Smite, but we're going to be transitioning to the console side of things. I'll see you guys there at 11 a.m. Eastern.